Hello, my name is Daniel Green. I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon in New York, and this next talk reviews some of the uh, de design principles for the hinge plate, um, one of the options that a surgeon can use um, when performing surgery and implant-mediated guided growth in children. The surgery itself is the symbol of the guided growth with the tree, um, and we recognize that it's really a uh, uh, there's been a big advancement since uh, Dr. Blount's root introduction to the staples uh, in 1949, and uh, many of the advances uh, have obviously been made by Dr. Stevens, and uh, it's a um, big honor to be in a conference, uh, attend a conference where he's participating. There's a number of, of plates available to the surgeon. Um, there's eight plates. Uh, by Orthofix, Peanut Plate, I believe by Biomed, Orthopediatrics makes uh, PD plates, and the hinge plates are made by uh, Pega Medical in Montreal. I just wanted to go over some of the principles of the of when we were coming up with the design of the uh, the hinge plate, um, and just like the design of any other um, any other uh, implant, there's some important principles. First, if you think back to the staple. And you look at the two tongs of the staple, as you can see with the with the blue square on the right, that the growth of the growth plate between those two prongs uh, is limited. And the real hinge of the deformity correction is limited by that zone, that restricted zone of growth. So the hinge itself isn't, uh, with a staple, isn't at the, uh, the cortex of the growth plate. And this is some artwork from uh, our patent application that basically uh, shows that and that's one of the key principles of the design of a hinge plate was to try to limit that area of restricted growth and bring the true core if you will of correction out to the uh, periphery of the growth plate. A diagram illustrating the same thing and um, the design principle behind the hinge plate. Uh, similarly the uh, um, eight plates and the orth and the uh, PD plates rely on the same principles, but they use the screws uh, as uh, allow motion and prevent and allow some growth between the two ends of the screws. However, there is some limitation to that with severe deformities, and it may be that the screws impinge on the plate. And uh, at that point, there's still some tethering effect between the two screws. And I think that's true for most for the uh, screws on the market. So the we applied for the pen in 20, 2004, and with government efficiency, we got it in 2010, and it became uh, available for use right about that point. Um, the plate is a robust, strong plate. It's supposed to designed to be stronger than a, a staple and some of the other plates on the market uh, made out of sternless stainless steel. And while the plate itself is thicker than the other plates, if you uh, we consider it to have a low profile because it's really the same profile as the screw head. Um, here's what we mean. It's uh, the robust plate. Um, the screw heads articulate within the plate, not on the outside. Um, this also allows for a stronger plate screw interface and the plate inter inter uh, the plate articulates with the head of the screw, not with the weaker neck of the screw. We use solid four or five screws and avoid can and do not offer cannulated screws in the system to prevent breakage. And the plate itself does not have a guide wire through the implant, uh, but it does have a innovative holding clamp which can um, place a guide wire through it if you'd like. Um, because of the motion of the plate, I believe there's a potential decreased stress with the uh, uh, seal growth. Um, so that may uh, be an advantage. Also, uh, with less stress across the implant, um, that perhaps uh, there'll be less screw pull out itself. Also, because we have a hinge, we're not concerned about using long screws, and I routinely use the longer scres, the 40 um, millimeter screws. 
Uh, probably one of the biggest advantages of the plate is that it's flex. It, uh, the hinge allows flexibility and allows to a combination of the non-flat surfaces that we're routinely putting these plates on. As you can see, the MRI, the distal femoral, um, distal femur, and proximal tibia are not flat, and the the hinge accommodates those surfaces. So I think that was just a brief review for the hinge plate. I think we'll stop here about just some of the principles, and thank you for your attention.